yesterday and God blessing uh, I felt the spirit of the Lord yesterday in a mighty way I felt and I I completely 100 percent agree with what was said that you know it takes God to bless it uh, it doesn't matter how hard us ministers study unless the Lord blesses you know it's it's not anything. Yes. and I appreciate your pastor I appreciate the spirit I felt here I appreciate the Snyders for keeping us what a wonderful family and and the hospitality that they have shown to our family we appreciate y'all greatly thank you and um, do ask an interest in your prayers as I try to stand before you today if you have your Bibles with you and you would like to turn with me, please turn with me up to Psalms chapter 81. Psalms chapter 81. And I want us to, uh, let's begin with verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. The Lord be with me today. I'd like to speak to you today concerning the subject of the honey and the rock. The honey and the rock. There's a lot to understand about this subject. Uh, I've said this before uh, the people that, uh, you know, on the radio they have this song, a, a more recent song on, on contemporary Christian radio. Uh, and uh, when everything else is playing, we might turn it on that, you know, if we don't want to listen to a bunch of junk. But um, that song was played. And I had to uh, swallow my pride for a minute because I laughed and I said, well, I don't remember that in Scripture. Well, you know, it was something I forgot about reading, though. And you've heard of honey there found in the, in the jawbone there in the carcass. You remember that? That Samson had slew the lion? And you remember that there was other parts in Scripture that it talked about honey and that uh, manna uh, that fell from heaven above that God provided for the children of Israel, that it tasted as honey. You remember that? And there was different uh, points in Scripture where it talks about that uh, he had a land there flowing with milk and honey. But I said, I don't remember honey in the rock. Give me a break. Well, I went to the Word of God and I said, I'm going to look this up and double check before I say any more and put my foot in my mouth. Well, I had to put my foot in my mouth. Because I found this scripture where it talks about honey in the rock. And it led to a wonderful study in scripture and I found uh, where scripture after scripture uh, that led up to uh, why this is a beautiful picture of where Scripture is talking about the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, there, the salvation has been brought unto God's people. And I want you to see something there that the honey there that God had provided there and the mist of the rock. Uh, I want you to think about this, uh, uh, that we find a shelter uh, there in the midst of the cleft of the rock as scripture teaches there. And I want you to think of how that God has provided for his children in a mighty way uh, and that he gives protection there from the enemy and he gives shelter for those little small creatures uh, there in this earth uh, that find those little clefts on the rock. Uh, but I also want you to think about there that God had provided there uh, some things and, and he is, God has provided us as he, his salvation that we have no work therein. 
And there, when you go over there, over in Romans chapter 8, as I mentioned yesterday, and you find there in verse 28, 29, and 30, in which that God lays out his wonderful systematic layout of how we have been saved by grace and grace alone. Uh, uh, when it says there in verse 28, when it says all things work together for good, it's not talking about all things have been predestinated. Uh, you understand that. Uh, all things, uh, what it's talking about in that portion of Scripture, it's talking about right there what our Heavenly Father has provided for us and is taking care for us and, and has blessed us in a mighty way. And he's taken care of us and he systematically laid it out for a reason that way. I understand that there's that uh, acronym TULIP that people use to remember the doctors of salvation by grace in which that the Primitive Baptist took that acronym and changed that P up from where the uh, Calvinists at one point had a hold of that and, and they made it uh, perseverance of the saints, that P. Well, brothers and sisters, the old Baptists took the P and they took it over there and they made it uh, preservation of the saints. Uh, but you understand this, that that is just an acronym to help remember the doctrines of grace. But there in Romans chapter 8, you understand this, that it's beautifully laid out for a reason there. You understand that it doesn't talk about depravity. God didn't provide you for depravity. You understand that? Amen. That is something we provided of ourselves, disobeying. Yeah, that's right. That's what we passed on, the law of sin and dead, we have passed on through Adam, the that's first right. Adam. And when Adam and Eve uh, was told not to eat of the particular fruit there in the Garden of Eden, and, and let me tell you, when they took of that fruit, uh, sin, death, was passed upon all mankind, and all mankind had there, hey, they had inherited that from them because that's all they could produce was sin and death. But Thanks be to God, the second Adam there that we read about there in Romans, where it talks the second Adam being Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. His righteousness was passed upon all, all being who? Was it all mankind? No, it was all of God's elect people that he knew before the foundation of the world. It was a work that God has done. It wasn't a work upon man. Because if it was work upon man, it wouldn't be by grace, would it? That's right. If it's by grace and grace alone, it has to be surely upon uh, the work of God and God alone. And I want you to think about this, that there in Romans 8, when it systematically lays that out, the foreknowledge of God and from the foreknowledge of God, them he foreknew, them he predestinated, uh, he, them he predestinated, he uh, predestinated to be conformed to the image of his what? Son. And election, which is foreknowledge, the love of God, is not the same thing as predestination. And that predestination, you have to understand this, that predestination is we have been predestinated, his children, right. has been predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That spiritually, when we have been quickened by the work of the Holy Ghost, we've been born again, there's a work done inside of us because we are the elect of God. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. That regeneration. And then there, when that body has been raised from the grave, that grand and glorious day, that which is dead and that which is in the ground and that which is corrupt, <laughs> and the skin worms have taken it up, uh, my dear friends, my God is going to be able to raise that up incorruptible <laughs> and make it just right and bless us with a heavenly home. <laughs> Isn't that all? Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why we're predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. <clears throat> and them he has uh, predestinated, them he called. What called? Called from death unto life here now. <laughs> when that work of the Holy Ghost, he has made that <clears throat> irresistible calling <laughs> that we can't resist. That's right. it's because it's the work of the Holy Ghost. Right. Now I want you to think about that. 
That's what blesses us to say, I want a desire to know God. I want to understand who God is. We're no longer alienated in our mind from God. We have a desire to know God and love him. He, right. he foreknew us before the foundation of the world. Now he's showing us. <laughs> That salvation of the Lord, he has revealed the arm of his salvation. He's blessed us to understand some things. He's given us that knowledge and understanding and blessed us through the calling there. And then from that calling, them he called, them he also justified, them he justified. Uh, how did he justify us? He justified us through his work of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> and them he justified, them he also glorified. Now the glorification there is preservation of the saints. Mm -hmm. Ain't that awesome? There's that systematic lay out there how God has worked all things, all things being what? All things being that that he has provided for, for God's people, you see. Amen. Not that meaning that you find there in the Hobby Lobby, misquoted, miswritten, and, and misapplied. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> but brothers and sisters, uh, we're talking about the way that the word of God has meant it there. And let's go back to our opening text there in verse 16. He should have fed them also with the feet finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Think of that. Should I have satisfied thee. What an awesome thing that's been done there. Yes. <clears throat> John 6, 37, you find there. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. That's a work of, of God. That's a work of grace. you find there in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace ye saved through faith, and that are not of yourself. Uh, it is the what? Gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You understand it's by grace and grace alone. Amen. Now, I want you to think of this. The rock. In Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 22, in 2 Samuel 22 verse 47, the Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. Blessed be my rock. And exalted be the God of the rock of what? My salvation. What have I been explaining to you? How God has saved you, not you saved yourself. That's right. He is the rock of our salvation. So therefore, I want you to look at this. Let's go over to Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, And we're going to begin with verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Notice that, that he might have the preeminence. Mm -hmm. Was it a preacher? Was it a prophet? Was it a man? Was it a woman? Was it anybody? No, that he might have the preeminence. You've seen narcissists out there. They always desire the preeminence. They're in love with themselves. That's where the word narcissism comes from. You've seen people out there today. They're constantly in love with themselves and desirous of everything that, hey, I've done it all and got that thumb in the lapel. But it says that he might have the preeminence. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father 
that in him should all, listen to this, fullness dwell. Now I want you to think about our opening text. That in him all fullness dwell. Sustainability, life. And I want you to think about this. In our opening text there, the honey is in what? The rock. Who blesses you with that honey? God. Who's blessed those bees to bake that honey and gives them the knowledge to be able to make that honey? And I want you to think about the nutrients and what all goes in to making honey. There's no way that man could ever figure that out. That's right. That is a God thing. That is a work that God Almighty does right there. And the fact that a person can bear, he can make honey uh, and have those honeybees and go into the boxes there where they come in and they make up that honey and that honeycomb. And I want you to think about how wonderful that is. And I want you to think about John the Baptist there. He came eating those locusts and what wild honey. That was a strong honey. And that was a beautiful picture there of it, one that is able to eat strong meat because locusts isn't something that we go and desire and go into the steakhouse down the road and say, well, I want me a plate full of uh, uh, roasted locusts. Uh, we don't go into the restaurant asking for that, do we? We're going to go in there asking for a ribeye or a New York strip or a sirloin. We're going to go in and ask for a grilled piece of chicken or something or something like that. We're not going to go in there asking for a wild locust. Uh, but you see, John the Baptist was that kind of brother uh, that was strong in the faith, that understood uh, the things of God, understood what, who he was preaching about and who he preferred greater uh, than anything else in the world, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Brothers and sisters, he understood he wasn't worthy to unlatch it, the very latchets on his shoe. Uh, he understood that he wasn't worthy of anything, even though that, it, that was his natural cousin. You understand that? Could you imagine that? That's your cousin coming there, and you're saying, hey, I'm not worthy. Can you imagine the humility and, and the, how humble he must have been there? Uh, brothers and sisters, that's the way that a child of God ought to be when they come into the house of God, understanding that they're not worthy huh, to be here, but it shouldn't discourage you huh, from being in the house of God. It should be an encouragement to you to give God all the glory for all that he's done for you, you understand. Brothers and sisters, let me say this, uh, that there, that uh, wild, that honey in the rock there, there's the rock of our salvation. There's the protection there from the times in which we're in trouble. And there God has provided for us as his children to be able to feast upon the word of God and to hear the preaching of the gospel and to be in the house of God. And God has blessed you to be able to be feasting from that honey there and what he's provided for you. You see there, God has provided for you in a mighty way, praise God. Uh, it's something that we haven't done of ourselves, but God is blessed there. Mm -hmm. But let me go back to our opening text there. Notice this, uh, there in verse 13, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Now, if you're not partaking of that honey as you ought to be partaking of that honey, does that mean that he's no longer the rock of your salvation? Absolutely not. It means you've been in disobedience and you're not being fed as you need to be fed. You're living on some things you ought not to be living on. And how often have we done that in our lives? Yes. <clears throat> My granddaddy loved this pipe tobacco. And he'd sit on that porch and he'd grab hold of his Prince Albert and stuff his pipe full of Prince Albert and light that old pipe and we'd sit out there and have us a good talk for a good long time. 
I miss those days. And he was a deacon in his church for many, many years. He even built the church that they worshiped in. Never understood the truth, but he was always, he was always supportive of me. And I even had me preach his funeral. I'm thankful for that. And preach my grandmother's funeral when they passed away. But the times we spent there on that porch and him uh, smoking that old tobacco pipe and my grandmother, <coughs> Robert, quit that. It's not good for you. It wasn't good for you. But I'm going to tell you, if he quit, I think it would have killed him. <laughs> he lived the right old life. Not many people could do that. I think some people just had to have it. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there's things that God's people does that is not good for them. Mm -hmm. Especially in the New Testament church today, sometimes God's people uh, get to that point in time and place in which uh, they're not doing those things in which God's word teaches and they're doing those things in which cause them much harm. And I want you to think or remember there in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear heal their land. Are you hearing me there? It's so simple. It's not for me to sit up here or, or stand here and Brother Stephen stand here or Brother Briscoe stand here and act like this isn't talking about us. It's talking just as much towards us as it is to everybody else, isn't it, brother? And especially the gospel minister because guess what? The re responsibility falls on our shoulders to proclaim the gospel and power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, I want you to think about this. <clears throat> As we get the things right in the church and we're feasting on the honey, the spiritual honey, that is, that is found there in the spiritual rock, the rock of our salvation. Brothers and sisters, we can grow up stronger in the Lord, can we? Mm -hmm. We can grow stronger in the Lord. We're depending upon the Lord, the rock of our salvation, in which our salvation is about grace and grace alone. It's not based upon our works. And you say, well, if I believe that, I'll do anything out there in the world today. Being saved by grace doesn't mean that it gives you the license to sin. It gives you a hefty responsibility to live in accordance to God's word. He that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him it is sin. There's consequences that we have in this life today. Yes, sir. I do understand this. That uh, there was a young man that I've been working with and teaching the doctrines of grace, and he would have a lot of these same questions and coming up and growing in the knowledge of, the, of, of grace and, and asking me questions. And he would get to that point, he would say, Well, wh what kind of commentaries would you suggest me to read? I said, Don't read them. <laughs> Put the things as far from you as possible. And I want you to come and hear the sound uh, preaching of the gospel of salvation by grace and grace alone. And I want you to listen to some good old Baptist sermons from Elder Sonny Piles there. Uh, and I, I want you to uh, be able to hear some of these sermons that we have on our YouTube channel. And I want you to be listening and focusing on the Word of God and reading it. And if you have a question, come to this old Baptist preacher and ask those questions. And we're going to study and learn how to rightly divide the Word of Truth. And I want you to understand how to discern between eternal salvation and time salvation or here and now salvation. And I want you to understand the differences 
between when the Bible talks about the judgment there uh, upon those that are righteous, uh, that that judgment is here in this life alone. Because guess what? Our judgment based upon eternity was put upon our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Amen. You understand that? He paid the price at Calvary once and for all for our sins. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Mm. Amen. And we don't have that price to pay. That's right. But again, we have to answer here and now, don't we? There's some consequences we have here and now. You go out into the street and you go live an ungodly life and you go to the bars and you get drunk and you go get in the car and you go out there driving, there's going to be some hefty consequences for living a wicked and ungodly life. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you this, the same for a child of grace. When a child of grace is choosing to make uh, a lifestyle choices, do whatever they want to do, live however they want to live, and not feast upon the spiritual honey that is in the spiritual rod, and feast upon the, the food of this world, hey, you're going to have consequences. There's consequences. And I want you to think uh, back here in Judges. And I want you to think about this. You remember there that when Samson There in verse 8. Verse 8. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion that he had slew. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands, and he went on eating, and came to his father and mother, and gave them... And they did eat, but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Brothers and sisters, I want you to see what a beautiful picture that is, that God has made a preparation for you, just as God has provided for them there in that time period. And there are some things that come, that is sweet, uh, that comes out of that death there, beautiful picture there. And I want you to see there that that, uh, that, that was dead, uh, God blessed something that was of life there within that which was dead, even through the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he was raised again there after three days and three nights there in that tomb. I want you to see there's something sweet there because the, his resurrection, God had blessed us with some spiritual and heavenly things there. Amen. Uh, what a blessing it is. Isn't that a blessing that when we have uh, the truth that we can share that spiritual honey there uh, with God's people. And what a blessing it is in God's, in, in God's house. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. Let us look over here. John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hey, the same was in the beginning with God. That he's that word. Amen. Not only that, that you find there in Luke chapter 2, verse 12, you find, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Now I'm fixing to show you something here. I pray the Lord will bless me. There's that manger. Uh, it was not the manger that people think today that was uh, a bunch of wood put together to make a manger with hay in. Those animals, when that salt would get down into to that wood, that salt uh, would be in that wood. The an animals would try and get to it more, and they would eat up the wood and destroy the wood. Those mangers back in those times, when they had those caves in the side of the hillside for those sheep to go into. And I want you to think about this, that that manger was a hewn out rock and it had a piece 
that came down inside in the center to hold that hay. And I want you to think about this, that, that those sheep would a feast and, and eat that hay there upon that rock. And what a beautiful picture of our Lord and Savior there when he was laid in a manger. They didn't have a big old fancy barn. There was no room in the inn. Jesus Christ, uh, who was the Word, what did it say there in John? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and was God. Brothers and sisters, let me say that. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and that babe was laid in that manger, and we're the sheep of God, and there he laid there, and he was the Word, and he what beautiful picture there that we're able to feast upon what? The Word of God. And when we hear the preached Word of the Word of God, we're able to feast there upon some things. So go back to our opening text there. <clears throat> that he would have given us what? Honey and the rock. Isn't that beautiful? There over there in the Old Testament scriptures or, or Old Testament times. And if you go over to those areas, there's places there uh, that they would have a uh, uh, bees that would make uh, honey there in the side of the rock and the, the honey would run down uh, on the side of the rock and onto the ground and places that they would go and step into that honey there because it would produce so much honey. I don't know if you've been to a place where the honey was being built there into a wall and the honey would be seeping out the cracks of the walls. And that's something. So there you think about this, that when the Bible teaches that, that he would give a land that was flowing with what? Milk and honey. God Almighty is providing for his people in a mighty way. And that honey there is a representation that there's life there. There's water there that sustains life. That, that the green grass can grow and the flowers can bloom and the bees have a place to go and collect uh, what they have to collect to make that honey. And there the, the cattle is healthy and has place and there's life there that they can get some water there to drink. And they have the green grass and they have the fields to graze in where their bodies is healthy and they're able to produce milk. Uh, back in the day when people would have droughts and have these famines, uh, their, the milk that would come from the cows would be so bitter because guess what? The milk wasn't uh, very taste uh, palatable because why? They were in a famine. But when the water was going good and when things was going good, that was Milk was sweet, uh, and it was good for them. You understand that's the way God is for God's people. When God's people has a, a humble and contract spirit there before the God, uh, God above, and they come into the house of God, worshiping in spirit and in truth, and praying. Uh, this is called the house of prayer for a reason. And praying uh, that God would bless in a mighty way. <laughs> and that God would bless that congregation to grow in spirit and in truth. Not just in number, but spirit and in truth. You understand that they may be, may be able to feast upon that spiritual honey there found in the spiritual rock. The rock of your salvation. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> We've been saved by grace, live by it and in it, I say. <laughs> That's what right. Scripture teaches. We should live in it. That's right. And we should live by it. Not just understand that we've been saved by grace, but live in it and by it. Now, <clears throat> you see there that In that opening text that we found there, he should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat. What, what a beautiful picture that is. It wasn't just wheat, but the finest of the wheat. You know, up near where I live, they've got lots of cornfields out there. And sometimes you go by them cornfields and you see some ain't doing as good as others. 
And when a certain farmer uh, is able to provide the local grocery store with some fresh corn, and that fresh corn on the cob that we go in there and get that is picked nice out of the fields, oh man. <laughs> I love that. Man, I love that. And we can grill some of that, and we can cook it on the stove or in the oven, and my wife does a good job either way. And we enjoy it. And we always try to keep some on hand. And you can tell when it's the finest of the corn and when it starts getting down to not so good. And you start out to pick through and cut this off and keep this much and put this aside. My daddy used to, so that we could go on a good vacation, he used to have us work a produce farm, a uh, produce market near where we lived. And on, in the summers for about two weeks, we would have to take care of it for the owners and work that thing and go to the farmer's market to pick up produce and bring it back and run that business. And he did that so us boys would be able to understand how to be entrepreneurs and how to run a business and how to do and how to provide for a family and how the produce worked. And I'll never forget, I'll look at him and I was like, this is that. I mean, come on, look at some of this produce. I swear we have to go through it. So. But brothers and sisters, sometimes it feels like in life you just got to whittle through some things to see some good things in it. But praise God that guess what? We're saved by his grace and grace alone. But brothers and sisters, God has blessed us if we're seeking his face, seeking his will, seeking his uh, His reading in his word, studying his word, coming here to the house of God, hearing the preaching of the gospel, and not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is. Now I'm not talking about those that can't. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying purposely doing it. Just because you can. You grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you're able to take hold of that spiritual honey and you're able to be, be able to eat thereof and feast upon it and be able to enjoy that that's coming out of that spiritual rock that has been provided unto you and blessed you uh, with eternal salvation uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has done that for you, not yourself. He's provided for you. Isn't that awesome? He's provided for you. I want us to think about one more, couple other things. I want us to look in um, let's look over here in Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 9. And he hath brought us into this place and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And I want us to go back to that. A land that floweth with milk and honey. He, he has blessed you with that spiritual life. Are you understanding that? Are you understanding the spiritual life that you have here in the house of God and and being able to feast upon it. Are you understanding if you take hold of that that's here, God can bless you and you take hold of it and you live by it and in it and what God has done for you. He has blessed you with these things. He can also bless you with the natural uh, good things in this life. He can heal your land. Amen. And we wonder why the problem we've got so much today and why they're out there doing so much destruction and so much corruption and brothers and sisters, uh, but yet the people doesn't understand why we've been blessed with the blessings that we've been blessed with and they take it for granted. That's 
right. Yeah, that's right. And we have it. We have the truth. You're a small remnant for a reason. The Bible teaches a remnant that overfloweth with righteousness. Think about that. The old Baptist church is that remnant that overfloweth with righteousness. The children of God is as the sand of the seas, but a remnant is all that you see on the shores of that ocean. On each continent, you see just a remnant of sand. And the majority of it is down deep into those oceans, as I mentioned yesterday. We see that remnant. And the New Testament church is that remnant that God, uh, that people out here, that God's people sees here timely in this life. And you've been blessed with a great, rich blessing as that. To know and understand the truth and understand what you've been saved from and by and what God's done for you. And he's blessed you beyond compare. And he's blessed you with his word. And he's blessed you with a wonderful pastor and ministers to preach the truth. Brothers and sisters, he's blessed you. And he's given you his spiritual rock with his spiritual honey. May we be able to take hold and enjoy it and appreciate it. And be thankful for it because guess what? There's plenty of honey in the rock that God has blessed us to have. Thank you for your time, your kind, sweet attention. Continue to keep us in your prayers. And thank you again for the opportunity to be here. We thoroughly enjoyed it and enjoyed being with you. And what a blessing. Thank you.